Bad for Love hit by Miami. I told y'all that's 15 videos, baby. 15 videos. Here we go. So, this is season one, episode four, Fashion Victims. Continues where it left off <clears throat> with throwing of ice cream. Pleasure P is just standing there, you know, and Blue at some point is like, look, man, you are in a situation. You got two different fucking females. You got to pick one. You got to make it right with somebody. And it's so crazy because it's like, Pleasure P ain't giving a shit. <clears throat> but, you know, Baby Blue Woe is giving us way more than he is, which I'm trying to figure out, like, if it wasn't for Shay, why the fuck didn't they fucking put Baby Blue on here? Like, I think he would have given us way more to work with than fucking Pleasure. I digress. <clears throat> Jeffrey and Malik have dinner. You know, Jeffrey at this point says that he is in a relationship. And then Malik's just like, is he more feminine than me? Then he, at some point, I, I, I didn't write now, but he has said, like, there's different levels. Like, you have, I think he said what? Like, masculine gays, punks fags and some other shit <laughs> and I'm just like wow wow dude and Jeffrey's just like you know he's he's definitely not secure with himself to say that now let me just be honest with y'all right quick fuck Jeffrey fuck Malik alright that's, that's all I'm gonna, and y'all gonna see why anything involving these two I'm literally finna skip past it so fuck both especially Jeffrey especially Jeffrey <clears throat> but Malik gives him a fucking uh, speaker backpack and that's that. So we got Amara, Veronica, and uh, Steph. Amara felt that Veronica, you know, should have warned her. Veronica says that, you know, she needs a she needs a solution to the problem. She won the apology. She got one problem solved. And then she even says that, you know, you brought the bullshit. You know, you came to my shoot crying fucking up the whole mood and I was just like well nice to know how the fuck you are as a fucking friend <laughs> like at that point it wouldn't have been shells for me like, I'm gonna just keep it all the way to fuck 100 which is like you ain't gotta tell me but fucking once and I am I'm not sitting here begging a motherfucker to be my friend you know what I'm saying like and if I can't open up to you and have that shit literally throwing the fuck back in my face I fuck you every which way from Sunday like for real for real so she says that, you know, she would have never let someone with a comment about her hair fuck with her mood. <clears throat> you might be right. But what people need to realize is that everybody has something that somebody comments on it that is going to take them to another fucking place. For her, it's not your hair. That's not you. But I guarantee you, if somebody would get on her about something else, it would send her in such a spiral that it probably wouldn't send tomorrow. So, <clears throat> Veronica says, I helped you out, and you're an ungrateful bitch. And it's at this point that she stood up and got a dominant stance. Now, Amara is better than me. I'm not even fucking lie to you. Because I don't deal well with that. <clears throat> you know, if I... I'm sitting here telling a lot of my business on these mud. Like, if y'all ain't watching these other ones, like, I'm giving y'all bits and pieces of it. But back when I was in Korea, like, I had a motherfucker <clears throat> is standing outside of my office window. Could have talked about whatever he needed to talk to, walks into my office, was not welcomed in, is walking in, throwing his weight around, comes over to my desk and put his hands on my fucking desk, leans over and, and in a dominant stand and started talking reckless. And then I got the fuck up. And I had to get him and the female that he brought up in there together because she couldn't handle me. Had to bring him in to handle. Yeah, it was a fucking situation. Got both the ass together, told him to get the fuck out of my office. And let's just say they're in a higher position to me. But I can't fuck. Yeah, what you're not finna do is you're not finna a try to have a dominant stance over me, and two, you're not finna try to disrespect me in front of my subordinates. We ain't finna fucking have it. That's just the gist of the story. That's the gist of it because I can give y'all the whole story, but I ain't finna do that. <clears throat> and Veronica's like, did you fuck him? <laughs> but I was like, no, but I'm pretty sure you did. And I mean, you know, that was pretty much it. And Veronica wanted to get Amara out of her, you know, element. And once she did, Amara, I mean, Veronica just laughed at it because she's like, okay, it was that whole, I got what I needed out of you. Whatever. I just felt the way that Steph let that shit go down the way that it did. So, it's one of those where Steph ain't a friend of no fucking body. 
Miami Tip is doing her video shoot. Kamara's a main lady in Walls Gunplay. He doesn't know if he should be mad or turned on. I'ma just say you played your cards all the way the fuck wrong in that situation. That's all I'ma say. Veronica and JoJo. <clears throat> Veronica invites her to talk about her situation with her parents because she saw that shit play out at JoJo's um store opening. And Hmm. Hold on. Okay, <clears throat> and then um, she tells um, JoJo that you know the whole thing with Young Hollywood, but she says that he was only trying to help her improve, improve her physical appearance, which is so far from the truth. Because and that's her trying to downplay the whole fucking thing, but you know JoJo don't think nothing of it. <clears throat> so then we get Trina. Yeah, Trina, <laughs> Trick, and Alvin. This shit was funny as fuck. So they do a cub appearance, right? And they talking about the T TNT album. Alvin joins. He sits down and he's happy Bobby isn't there, which I'm just like, okay, you are all the way the fuck out of order, guy. And he says, this is millionaire status here, baby. And I'm sitting there just like, where? <laughs> like, where? <laughs> I was confused. I was confused. I was bewildered. But I was confused. <laughs> Baffled. <laughs> okay. Flabbergasted. Okay, we have synonyms for days. Okay. And Trick <laughs> turns to Trina and said, I got my buddy on your cousin. <laughs> and a look on Alvin's face. He was mad. <laughs> but I agree with Trick. <laughs> and Trina brings up joy. And he walks away. And I'm kind of getting mad with Trina because you can tell that she's not here to talk about any of her business which I'm not mad about I'm off of talk about the music but I don't like how her storyline revolves around her cousin both her, her cousin and I believe Joy is her sister no Joy is her other cousin so both of your storylines revolve around your cousins and not around you and it's funny because her cousin Bobby is having his own storyline independent of her but it seems like she's latching going to Joy and I don't like that <clears throat> So you got Prince and Gabby. Uh, he was out all night. Uh, he comes home to Gabby. Wait, hold on. Sorry, 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 sorry. <clears throat> it's my bad. He uh, he has a night off. He goes out with Gabby. He says he has a deadline that is coming out. He wants her to model, and then he says he wants her, you know, to come out, get drunk, break in some new sheets. He he's just corny. He's just corny. And, uh, I really think he's just trying way, way too hard. Way too hard. He doesn't have to. So, Prince and Liz, um, <clears throat> Prince comes home looking rough than the motherfucker, but them shoes, though. I like them shoes. I like them shoes. And, um, you know, he tells her uh, he was with Gabby, and Liz goes the fuck off. She goes zero to 100 for no fucking reason. Where it's just like, I like, li like literally, I truly didn't see the, the transition i just did and come from a motherfucker that people say that they don't see the transition with me that shit was just like she stopped <laughs> and then she's throwing his clothes at the fucking window and shit and then she decided maybe she was watching beyonce emotions like maybe mona told her watch this scene where beyonce grabs her clothes throw them in the damn tub and put bleach in it and shit so she was channeling that but i'm glad she ain't channel left eye because you know we don't need to be burning up no motherfucking sneakers and shit in the motherfucking tub so that was that <clears throat> so gun playing trick he's in the studio they talk about <clears throat> their wearing problems but one thing that trick said that stood out to me is that he said joy ain't been to the house in about three years and then she all of a sudden pops up. So I hate to say it, but that leads me to believe that she's a bit of a fucking opportunist. Where it's just like, you ain't came to see him at no other time. But now that he's filming. And he's about to do this project with Trina. And now he's getting more the spotlight back on him. Now you want to pop the fuck up after three fucking years to have a scene. Okay. <clears throat> so we got Bucky, Liz, and Pooch. So Pleasure... They went back on tour. Liz knows um, Pooch um, for forever, but Prince doesn't know that they're cool. Becky brings up Mint Chocolate, who is Gabby, but don't know that's her name. Um, and Liz brings up 
Who does she bring up? Yeah, Liz brings up the whole Gabby thing, but again, Bucky don't know that's her name. And Pooch is like, oh, well, you know, your man is having the vet. You know, maybe we should, you know, go because Liz wants some get back. And for Michelle to be this outstanding person, it's just like, you're orchestrating the mess. <clears throat> and I don't like it. And I don't fuck because one of the ways it's like, you're going and you're, put, you're putting this out there, you know, for ill intent. But you're so much better than Prince. Okay. She won't talk about Ratchet, but you keep Ratchet company. But okay. So we got Jeffrey and Bobby. Jeffrey uh, goes to, um, I'm sorry. Bobby goes to put his stuff in uh, Jeffrey's closet, sees the backpack. Jeffrey says it's a gift. That, because Bobby already knew it was from, from the ex, because, you know, that brand of book bags, you know, um, Malik is a sponsor, ambassador, that's the word, ambassador. <clears throat> and then he's like, oh, he brought it to my job. <laughs> so Bobby ain't boo-boo the fool. And his whole thing is like, okay, so y'all keeping in contact and whatnot, so he feels comfortable enough that he could just bring shit to your job. Which I don't think Jeffrey knew that that was going to make it any fucking better. And Bobby turns up and then he fucking leaves. Steph has an event. Amara doesn't show because Veronica's going to be there. And I can understand that. Amara was trying to do Steph a favor by not saying turning her motherfucking event out. You can't be mad at her for that. Young Hollywood is, is backstage while JoJo and Veronica are in the audience. So they all meet up in the back. <clears throat> and Veronica, on one hand, I think she was upset. That's just like, oh, so y'all got a thing going on. But then she even says that. It's funny how you sat there while me and Amara are going at each other, but you two low-key working with each other, and you ain't said shit. And they began to talk about the Amara situation. And you can tell editing happened <clears throat> because they cut the shit. You can tell where they cut it because they cut it right before. Joe just like, you know what? I'm going to leave. You guys are talking about Amara. I don't appreciate it. I don't think it's cool. I'm just going to exit. Stage left. And I can appreciate her for that. I really can. Where it's just like, you know, you may not be friends with this person, but you can understand that the shit is not right. Because it's one thing to sit here and tell your version of events. It's another thing to sit here and start going in. And you can tell there were certain pieces where they were going in. And you can tell that they got cut to keep, you know, from really putting out there what was said. Maybe, you know, to like shorten that scene for time constraints, you feel me? <clears throat> what the fuck else we going with this? <laughs> Prince, so uh, Gabby, so Gabby brought in uh, Nikki, who is a club owner, and Kitty, who has so many damn followers on fucking Instagram. They are modeling in his um show, which is good for him because Gabby is a model. Nikki has you know a club, so that's going to bring uh, her following to his line. Excuse me, and Kitty has all these damn followers, so of course her snapping pitch is one of those where it's just like it's a business move. I got it. His shit look basic as fuck, but I ain't here to hate. Hey, he got a motherfucker line I don't. Well, I'm not really fashion forward to fucking begin with, but y'all feel what I'm saying. So Liz and them get there. She I'm sorry, yeah, Liz wants to act a fool in public, but Pooch says no, do that shit backstage. So, again, you know they're here to turn up. You brought them here with the intent to turn the fuck up. So, <clears throat> the event happens. My only thing with the event is, like, it was too fucking dark to have all the fucking photography and whatnot. So, it's like, it took away from, you know, the actual uh, catwalk thing. Where it could have been dark further towards the back. But as they started to advance down the catwalk, it should have just been proper lighting. But, again, his shit. I'm just giving constructive criticism. I have modeled before, so I'm just saying, just a little, just a little bit of constructive criticism now. So, <clears throat> let me see. Al walks Gabby. <clears throat> Bucky identifies her as mint chocolate. But Liz identifies, like, no, that's the Gabby bitch. So now everything's all come together. They go backstage. Gabby introduces herself, and Gabby, Gabby is pretty much telling Bucky, like, well, I mean, yeah, I'm the ex, but I mean, if you was really, you know, his girl, I mean, you ain't got no ring and shit. <clears throat> Kitty comes over to even out the odds, which I can understand, because Prince is literally trying to figure out, like, what the fuck is going on? 
And Gabby mentions that. Yeah, I'm sorry. So Gabby didn't already mention the whole rain thing and everything. I kind of got ahead of myself. So. And then throw. Yeah, then she throws a drink in fucking Bucket's face. Then Bucket got mad. So, you know, we got fucking shoes flying and drinks flying. And, you know, Buggy is kind of being, like, somewhat pushed out the door. And then you had fucking uh, Nikki grab her from the back of her hand, yank her ass down. And is that where the shit went off? That's where the shit went off, so. <sighs> I'm starting to get tired. My mouth starting to get dry. Like, sipping on this water is not helping me right now. But I'm trying to get these reviews out. I'm really trying. What I'm probably going to do is just record all these and either and edit them and upload them tomorrow or... <sighs> Okay, it's 9.39 at night. I'm going to try to get this shit out tonight. I'm going to try. All right, that's all I got, y'all. And I'll be right back for a little women ATL.